New Center Maine presents Agree to Disagree with Phil Harriman and Ethan Strimling, an ongoing podcast on Maine politics. Phil, a Republican, and Ethan, a Democrat, are two of Maine's most well-known and respected political analysts. Every week and sometimes daily, get new episodes discussing all things political and how it affects Mainers like you. And now, here's Phil and Ethan. Welcome to the first special episode of Agree to Disagree podcast on News Center Maine with Phil and Ethan. That's Phil. I'm Ethan. Boy, there's a lot going on. We had to uh, jump on the air here to try to get a second segment in this week, huh? I'm surprised that there's airtime for you and I with all the campaign money to <laughs> spend on commercials. I think that's it. I imagine they're going to try to run a few. Uh, no matter what you and I say, they'll be running a few ads contradicting our words almost immediately. They'll probably uh, jump into this podcast and show us a commercial. <laughs> We're going to see Susan Collins and Sarah Gideon popping their heads and saying, that's a lie. That's a lie. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> Yeah, so we got a few topics. Thought we'd uh, dive yeah. in. Just, just, we're just going to do a few debate topics. We're not going into all the nailed it and failed it. And, oh, uh, I know your on. favorite segment. I know we're yeah. not going to. You're not going to get to yawn, but I might yawn a few times on you just to uh, make a point. But, <laughs> but we are going to talk about Trump, Pence, Jill Biden, Donald Trump Jr. All coming to Maine in the last week. What's going on with that? Yeah. Savage and Lynn file suit against uh, rival TV station for not including them in their debate. Amy Coney Barrett, of course, confirmed now on the court. Boy, they didn't waste much time with that swearing in. Oh. 450,000 absentees in the bank already. Phil, is there going to be anybody left to vote on Election Day? Well, if if they are going to vote on Election Day, they won't have to worry about six feet distancing because there'll be so few people going. <laughs> That's a true main election. The, the social distancing <laughs> will just be natural, so they don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Uh, all right, Scoozy, let's get started with this special edition of New Center's Agree to Disagree. As Speaker of the House, I solemnly and sadly open the debate. All right, Phil, as I mentioned earlier, in the past week, we have seen now Donald Trump, Mike Pence, Jill Biden, uh, Kamala Harris's husband, Doug, now Donald Trump Jr., Corey Lewandowski's coming. Everybody's coming to Maine to uh, campaign for their respective candidates. What is going on? Why is Maine so popular these days? Well, I think there's a couple of uh, things in play. First of all, uh, Maine matters in uh, in this election because there is uh, at least one electoral college vote awarded for each of our congressional districts. And of course, uh, if you win the overall vote tally, you get two. So. Uh, both candidates realized that the second congressional district uh, could produce an electoral college vote, and that has motivated them to uh, to make a personal appearance. And I would also add, it's another example of why the electoral college system of, of electing the president matters, because who would want to be in the second congressional district where there are more trees per square mile than anything else if we didn't matter? I think there's more moose per square mile than anything else up there, isn't there? <laughs> That's probably uh, a better analogy. <laughs> uh, I'll get to your second point in a second. Uh, the first point, though, it, it doesn't quite make sense to me. Look, it's one electoral vote. Uh, he, uh, the way things are playing out right now, Biden has a pretty substantial lead. So either things are a way lot tighter than we realize, which I don't think because there's not much evidence of that. Or I think they are perhaps coming because they realize at this point it's all about the U.S. Senate and Susan Collins. They're trying to push turnout among Republicans in the northern part of the state because that's where she is certainly going to be more popular. They know that she has to have a margin up there close to Trump's last time, 10, 11, 12 points in order for her to have a shot. So I think all these Republicans are coming to try to boost Republican numbers to see if they can get Collins over the finish line because if they don't get Collins over the finish line, they know they don't get, by any stretch of the imagination, the um, they don't get uh, the majority of the U.S. Senate. I, I, I see it very differently. There's no reason why uh, Biden and company, having the lead that you suggest that he has, would want to come and spend resources in the second congressional district. I, I see it differently. I think the numbers are indicating that Trump, once again, can win the second congressional district, and they want to make sure that that 
uh, that electoral college vote is secure. And thus the reason you saw the president make a surprise uh, trip from a, a scheduled event in New Hampshire, why he took the opportunity to make it, uh, you know, a relatively short side trip up to the Bangor area. So from my perspective, the second congressional district is very much in play. And you didn't hear any of these uh, candidates or surrogates mention vote for Susan Collins. I think they were up here because this was all about that one electoral college vote. Well, make no mistake about it. I'm not saying it's not about the electoral college vote. I think that vote is real. But look, Donald Trump needs Pennsylvania. He needs Florida. He needs much bigger states than that one electoral vote, much more important. So yes, I'm sure they're trying to get that electoral vote and they don't have to mention Susan Collins by name. They're just trying to push Republican turnout because they know if more Republicans turn out, remember Republicans are the third largest party in the state. Republicans need every single person to turn out. And right now you are so far behind in terms of early votes that I think they're feeling like there's no way Susan can win if they don't jack up that turnout. Strim, WMTW is holding a U.S. Senate debate on Wednesday night, but they have apparently only invited two candidates running, Sarah Gideon and Susan Collins. Both Lisa Savage and Max Lynn were left off the invite list, so they have now filed a complaint with the Federal Election Commission. Should uh, WMTW let them all on the stage, Ethan? Yeah, they should. Uh, you know, I don't know about the lawsuit. I don't know what that's going to do one way or the other. Uh, you know, TV stations can, I think, do whatever they want to do as long as they set clear ground rules around it. Uh, I do think there were some questions there. But in the end, of course, all four candidates should be on the stage. All four candidates qualified to be on the ballot. None of them have done anything to invalidate their um, you know, their ability to be on stage. Look, I mean, Max Lynn of anybody uh, has sort of violated the rules of the campaign debates more than any other. But in the end, he gets to be there because he is uh, somebody who got on the ballot. And I think it's a fair balance, too. It's not like it's just one third party candidate who takes more from any of the others. Plus, Maine is unique. We have ranked choice voting, which means people get to rank any candidate they choose. And they don't have to fear that that vote is going to be taken away from the one that they may ultimately want to win. Yeah, ranked choice voting has turned out to be less contentious campaigns, less money involved in the election process. Uh, I think we would all agree that has not been the result of uh, ranked choice voting. As it, as it relates to WMTW, I suspect they established a policy that said they were going to uh, welcome candidates into their debate if they polled over a certain percentage or some rationale behind um, their decision not to have Savage and uh, and Lynn. That being said, I think even you would agree with me that this race is all about Gideon and Collins, and that's the way the the, the debate should shape up. Boy, you know, I, I mean, yes, of course, it's all about Gideon. It's all about Collins in terms of who are going to be the final two. There's no doubt about that. But I think the importance of other people being on the ballot and letting their voices be heard, just like anybody else, uh, this is an unforced error on their part. You're right. They can set rules. But my understanding from those cam the other campaigns is that there were no rules set. They weren't even called and said, hey, this is the standard you have to meet in order to get on the stage. They only invited two. I think they're just trying to get a ratings bonanza. It's not serving democracy. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with your, your premise. But I, at the same time, I can't imagine why WMTW would create this controversy uh, you know, for no other purpose than to have their name discussed as we are. What what benefit is it to them other than they have uh, established the protocols of how they're going to run their debate? Uh, the candidates could choose not to participate. We would, wouldn't be having the, this conversation. And I suspect if I'm the Sarah Gideon team, they can't wait for November 3rd to come fast enough. They don't want her to make any last minute gaffes or, or you know, cause people to change their mind. So it'll be interesting to see. There's, what, two more debates scheduled before Election Day. It'll be interesting to see who actually wants to participate. All right, my friend. Despite Susan Collins voting against her, the only Republican, Amy Coney Barrett, is now on the Supreme Court. Putting aside qualifications and all of that, what do you think happens now in terms of revenge, counter revenge? Has the partisanship down in D.C.? Is it just irreparable at this point? 
Well, I, I hope not. Um, you know, this is this is a, an, a good example of, uh, I, in my view, why we need to uh, re-elect Senator Susan Collins because she is willing to look at things and make a, a, a courageous decision. She could have gone along with the rest of the Republican caucus, but she said, no, I, I, I didn't feel right that this was the way that it should have been done with Barack Obama when he was president, and I'm not going to be a hypocrite and, and, and support um, Amy Comey Barrett because of Republicans being in charge. So uh, for her, I think that was the right decision. But the raw politics is that there was no corruption. There was no collusion. The Constitution is clear that the president has the power to nominate someone. He did. And they got confirmed. And we're going to have to see what type of jurist Amy is. Uh, I think we know what type of jurist she's going to be. It's very clear that Republicans have been fighting for a long time to get a majority right wing, um, uh, get a right wing majority on the Supreme Court, extreme right wing at this point, and they've got it and they locked it in. I think they know that uh, Trump is not going to win next Tuesday or they're very worried about that. And so they made sure they got their justice on the court. Hey, look, you're right. Do they have a legal authority, constitutional authority? Of course, but not the moral authority. And I think they're going to pay for this. I don't think people like it. I think Democrats will get the majority. This is part of the reason why. And then I think there's going to be some real conversations about what do we have to do in order to get our courts balanced, because they are out of balance right now. And you think about it, um, there are five Supreme Court justices right now who were nominated by presidents who had not received a majority of the vote. That is not representative of democracy. Well, we, we are not a democracy. We are a representative republic, and we keep forgetting that it's about the states that make up the United States. That aside, uh, I think you would say that John Roberts has not been the right-wing jurist that he was predicted to be when he was confirmed uh, in, the, in the U.S. Senate. So time marches on. Jurists are supposed to be dispassionate, distance from the political process, and I think that's what you're going to find uh, with Amy uh, Comey Barrett. And frankly, we weren't having this discussion when the court leaned on the liberal side. And as time marches on, we will find the courts will uh, favor the Constitution over the politics. Remind me when that was, when it was leaning over on the uh, liberal side, because it's been a little while since. And look, you know, OK, has Roberts been a little bit less extreme than people expected? Sure. But he is still a very conservative justice. He is counted as one of the six. He occasionally will step aside from them, but on very fundamental issues uh, for the American people, certainly on Roe, he has not been uh, with the majority of the people and representative republic or not, you would hope that our government reflects uh, the majority of the American people. And again, we have five Supreme Court justices placed on that court by presidents who did not receive a majority of the vote from the American public. That is a problem. But they were confirmed by a Senate that was a majority of the public. I don't actually know about that. I'll bet if you ran the numbers, it'd be a little more. I'll bet, I'll bet I, I might do that for next week's show. All right. 450,000 Mainers have already cast their ballots. Strim, simple question. Will there be anyone left to vote in Maine on Election Day? I know. I mean, how different is this? You and I know. I mean, one of the favorite days, politicians out there yeah. shaking hands at the polls. It's a great time to connect with voters. And, and you actually get votes from doing it because oftentimes voters are like, oh, yeah, I met that guy. That's important. Made a good impression. That woman was, you know, I really liked her. So all of that's gone, which is very interesting. But the other big thing is with so many people voting, they're spending all this money on TV, online. Mail is still coming. I'm still getting mail. I voted three weeks ago. So they're spending money on folks who've already voted. The pool of voters now is tiny compared to uh, what it usually is. Yeah, I think, uh, would you estimate uh Half of the voters have already cast a ballot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Easily half. Yeah. So uh, that means you can go stand at the polls on Election Day, Ethan, and say hi to the Republicans who will probably be the ones in in uh, in, in mass going out yeah, uh, to vote. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, you're right. The ones who are left. I mean, look at the city of Portland, for instance. Now, obviously, this is not representative from a party um, uh, registration perspective, but uh, as of 
yesterday, there were 31,000 votes already cast in the city of Portland. We usually get about 38,000, but of those, uh, 22,000 were Democrats, 2,500 were Republicans. Wow. I mean, that is an overwhelming majority of Democrats are just motivated early. Republicans are sitting home. You better hope there's not a snowstorm on election day, brother, because <laughs> you need every vote you can get to make up that difference. So is there more than 2,700 Republicans in Portland? <laughs> there are. There's actually, I think there's actually about six or seven thousand. I can't remember the last numbers, but yeah, you guys are pretty far, far behind the rest of them. But uh, yeah, you should be doing a little better than that. Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, the, between the convenience that has been offered by the municipal clerks and a, and a shout out to the volunteers and the clerks of uh, Maine who have welcomed the people to the polls, um, you know, like it's an open house, so to speak, and and I've already voted, it was relatively easy to, uh, to do that. And uh, I think that is going to be a steady trickle, if you will, in the days ahead so that people don't have to worry about social distancing and, and the other things that you've mentioned, like the weather and so forth. So uh, it'll be interesting to see at, when the election is over and the votes are counted, how many people voted absentee based on their party affiliation, which we know today is Democrats have uh, voted uh, in much larger numbers than Republicans. And if the Republicans <clears throat> actually show up on election day and vote and we have a traditional election turnout, the results might surprise you. Maybe. Whoa, so that wraps it up, buddy. That was quick. Yes. So, uh, he was doing so much more, but that was kind of fun. Our first special edition of News Center's Agree to Disagree with you and me. That felt pretty good, huh? Yeah. So let's yeah. ask Donald. How'd we do? And you're fake news. Category you are fake eight. news. <laughs> you skipped over you. Mitch McConnell, though. Mitch <laughs> didn't get to swing the gavel and cancel us out. Uh, the clock has run out. The buzzer is sounding. Well, see, he did have the last he word. He did have the last word. All right, my friend, have a great time. I'll see you in a couple days. We'll do this All again. Right. I'm sure lots more news will happen before then. See you Thursday.